Hello and welcome back to Crafted by Corey. If you're new, I'm Corey. Welcome to my channel. If you're returning, thank you as always for being here. I have some brand new spring inspired DIYs. So let's go ahead and get right on into the crafting. DIY number one. All right, this is a tray. It's um, a wood tray. I've had it in my stash for a while. It had come in a set of five, I believe, and I had made a three-tiered tray with some of them a while back. It was actually one of my most popular projects ever, and I'm still super proud of it, but um, I'll leave a link in the description box for that video if you'd like to check it out, but um, this one was the largest in the set, and I had been trying to figure out what to do with it. Um, I decided I was going to coat it with my Adirondack white chalk paint that you can see me doing here. And I just gave it a couple of really good coats so that it was completely covered. And um, once that was all set and dry, I did use my heat gun to help it out a little bit. I went and grabbed my Mod Podge. This is a matte Mod Podge because I wanted to try and kind of stick with the matte um, I wanted to say sheen. That's not what I'm thinking is the right word, but I think you understand what I'm talking about. Um, finish. That is the word I was looking for. I wanted to stick with the same matte finish, um, that the chalk paint provides. So once I had a good coat of that settled just on the bottom, I'm coming in, helping that to to dry and now this is a piece of tissue paper from a pack I got at the Dollar Tree. I thought it was so bright and springy and lively. I just think it's super pretty. Um, so I am pressing it down onto the dry Mod Podge and I think I've mentioned this recently. This is my favorite way to apply um, paper, thin paper with Mod Podge. You can see I'm pulling it up there and reapplying it it's um, nice because it's a little bit tacky, but um, I can still lift the paper up and fix it and smooth it out um, if needed. So there's obviously a lot of extra paper around the edge. I will eventually trim some of that away because it started getting in my way. But for right now, I had just started from the center. I was smoothing out any creases. They virtually disappeared. It was amazing. Um, and now I'm just using my fingernails really to kind of press the edges right into that corner, or that like rim, right? Where the side wall meets the bottom. Now this is a piece of parchment paper I'm putting down using my little Easy Press Mini. You certainly can use a, um, an iron for this, but you definitely want to make sure that you are using parchment paper or butcher paper so that you are protecting your surface, but also your machine. So if you're using an iron or an easy press, you don't want to be getting Mod Podge or anything else on your tool because it could end up damaging future projects or your clothing if you happen to be using your iron. So you want to make sure that you're putting something down so that you're not scorching anything and you're protecting your your tool so here i am going through and um, trimming off some of that excess i'm not taking it all the way down to the um, base just yet i will be coming in a little bit later to do that but i needed to get some of that out of the way because it was just being a nuisance so i'm really pressing that parchment paper um, up into that corner as well and kind of having it fold up along the edge so that I know that it's completely covered and I'm trying to get that interior edge sealed to the best of my ability. Going through and trimming out some more and I'll just continue to do the same thing until I feel like I've gotten everything nicely sealed down. So now I have my X-Acto knife and I'm going to run it right along that, I'm gonna call it that inside corner for lack of a better term. And I realized that my knife was actually kind of dull and it wasn't cutting the way I expected. So I went ahead and switched out that blade. I do recommend having a new blade for this, um, something that's gonna be nice and sharp um, so that you don't have to worry about it tearing or pulling at your design. 
and I'll just continue all the way around making sure that I am being careful to stay in that corner. I find that it's very easy to come up out of that corner so I was being pretty mindful of that. Um, I am going relatively slow. Uh, this video is sped up about two and a half times just to kind of give you an idea. So I am taking my time and just making sure that I am staying as much in that crease, that corner as I possibly can and just removing the extra bits and pieces. Also just making sure that the edges are um, staying down around the edge and so I'm going to come back in here seal that in again with the easy press a little bit more and then I will be ready to move on to the next step um, I was hesitant to put Mod Podge over this because I didn't know if it was going to end up making the paper wrinkle um, so ultimately I decided I did want to do it because I wanted the project to be completely sealed. So I grabbed the matte Mod Podge again and I did do that. Um, I went in very, um, with very little at first because I was, like I said, I was really worried it was going to end up ruining it somehow, but it worked like a charm. It was perfectly fine. So I ended up doing a really nice coat all around the entire bottom and also making sure that I was sealing in the edges around that whole outer edge. I thought about putting um, handles on this as well and I still think that it would be really cute with handles um, so you have a way to pick up this little tray. I just didn't have anything on hand that I thought would work well for what I was trying to do. So instead of mucking it up and having it be less than what I was envisioning. I opted um, in the end just to leave it um, without handles, but it's certainly something that you could do. And I think that this is going to be beautiful on my coffee table, no matter whether I end up putting handles on it later or not. It just makes me happy. It's just one of those pieces that I think is just really charming all by itself but gave it um, a little help with the heat gun to see it dry because I was anxious to see it in its final stage and uh, just being careful not to scorch it, but super happy with this piece. I hope that you like it as much as I do. Let me know in the comments what you think. DIY number two. Okay, I saw somebody do this on TikTok, I think it was, and I had to try it because I thought it was such a cute idea, but I have this hand towel that I'd gotten in a pack a while ago. I think I'd gotten it from Bed Bath & Beyond. Um, and then these are Dollar Tree candles, and I've got my little Easy Press Mini that I'm heating up there again. I'm just gonna get my candles unwrapped and ready to go. And then I'm going to be getting um, that napkin or hand towel ready. So I'm going to remove the second ply. This one, I, frequently napkins will have three plies. This is a hand towel and it has just the two plies. I double checked to be sure. But it also has like this um, decorative edge around it I'm gonna say it's kind of like an embossed edge and I was worried I've, I've never done this so I was worried that that might cause an issue with applying the um, I'm gonna call it napkin just for ease but um, I didn't know how that would respond so I decided to cut it out so that's why I'm kind of cutting these strips along here I was just cutting out that edge that you sometimes see on fancier napkins or hand towels and now I am measuring out um, what I need to be able to completely cover the candle. 
It took me a minute to figure out how I wanted to do it because I'm also thinking about the pattern that's going to end up on the candle and I'm thinking about what the top is going to look like, the top edge, what the bottom edge is going to look like. I realized that when I cut that first strip off, it, the, my cutting line was not straight. So I opted to um, make that nice uh, crease in it. I thought maybe my knife was going to work, but it just wasn't sharp enough. So I do ultimately go back and cut it with my scissors. But I just wanted to make sure I had a nice sharp edge on that um, because it was going to be at the top of my candle or it is going to be at the top of my candle. Now, having watched this back and doing the editing process, I'm thinking the next time I try to do this, it was so much fun. and I think it would make a really cute gift. So I will be doing it again. Um, but I might use um, a ruler next time and kind of wet the edge along the ruler and tear it by kind of ripping it up along the ruler, if that makes sense. I'm not sure. Kind of to have um, a little bit of a rough edge to it, which I think might be really pretty to wrap up around the top of the candle. I don't know, it was just an idea. So I might experiment with that. But here you saw, I folded it in half again. I'm cutting another strip because I've got two candles. I want two of these strips. And then I will measure it off to see how long the strips need to be so that they don't have a lot of overlap at the seam. So I'm going to measure that first one out. And I also want to make sure that I'm going to keep these really tight when I do it. So getting an idea of where that needs to be um, trimmed. There we go. That was the word I wanted. I'm going to double check it. Measure twice, cut once, right? <laughs> so, so once I figured out um, the size of it, I went ahead and trimmed that off. And then I'll uh, measure out the second candle just in case, making sure that it's um, the same width. Dollar Tree, you never know. I mean, these are obviously the same, but um, I don't know. I just wanted to be extra, extra sure. So I'm going to go ahead and trim the second piece down to be the same because it did appear to be the same um, width circumference circumference and now i'm going to be ready to actually apply this my little easy press is ready to go i've got my piece of parchment paper i'm going to wrap this this is the same one i used on the last project you guys i reuse my parchment paper where i can um and then just iron it on again you can use an iron for this i think the person i saw doing it on TikTok actually did use an iron but i thought my little easy press would be just fine for this and it absolutely was i probably didn't need to have it on its hottest setting the lowest setting probably would have been fine but what is so cool about this is that the wax melts and absorbs right into the towel, the, the napkin. And so the napkin honestly becomes wax coated and it's like it's part of the candle. It is the neatest thing. Um, I wish I had thought of it, um, but just such a neat idea. And you can make your candles look like so many different things just based on whatever um, tissue paper you have, or if you have a pretty hand towel like this, disposable, right, paper, hand towels. Um, I don't know if gift wrap would work because that might not absorb, but anything that would absorb like this, I think um, that would work. So I'm just wrapping the bottom around um, and sealing that down. And then I had just made sure that my top edge was um, sharp along the top and that's it look at how cool that is i am in love with this project i honestly am so then i'm going to do the same thing with the other um, again you do want to make sure you're using parchment paper or uh, butcher paper um, there will be melted wax that ends up on the the paper so you do not want to be getting that on your iron or your easy press or whatever it is that you're using um, and then I was trying different ways to see what might be the most efficient. Um, the first time I had obviously wrapped it all around, but I had found that it was hard to keep the whole thing taut. This time I had started by not wrapping it all around and um, just focusing on the seam. I just got rid of some of the, the loose wax that had 
um, fallen or been sticking to the paper and it wasn't sticking anymore. So it was just like in the way. Um, but uh, ultimately, I think if you focus on the seam first and then wrap it around the whole thing and do what I did the first time, that's probably the best way to go about this. And here I'm just sealing off the bottom again. And that's it. Now I noticed that the top this time I had um, little melted wax on there. So I just melted it back down again. <laughs> Brand new. Love it. And that's it for this one. Let me know what you think. DIY number three. All right, this was my inspiration picture. I saw it online, I thought it was beautiful. So I found some colors that I thought were similar. This is the ultramarine blue, pearl arctic blue. This is the silver, that's actually the far one on the right there. And then my pearl sage green. And so these are all mixed. I believe it was one to four with Floetrol. Um, to be honest, I should have put more Floetrol in it. You're going to see shortly when I am struggling with getting it to um, move. <laughs> yeah, it was it was a struggle. But this is my Amsterdam white. This is also um, diluted. This, I think, is actually diluted with water, if I recall correctly. And I am just going to use my little palette knife and make sure that my whole surface is covered um, to get this started. I found a little bit of a glob there, so I pulled that out with the tip of the knife and just gonna smooth this all out. So this is one of two paint pours I'm going to be doing in this video. I am so excited that you all seem to be enjoying the paint pouring. I find it so relaxing and fun. If you have not tried it yet, I highly encourage you to try. It's honestly a lot of fun. Um, and if you don't have Floetrol, you can dilute your paints with water. You just wanna make sure you get them to a consistency where they'll actually run. Um, so and there are some really great videos out there on how to get your paint to the right consistency. So just using my little torch to pop some of the bubbles that I was seeing in the base coat, and then we'll be ready to start applying the paint colors. And um, for the second project, I do end up adding more Floetrol to the paint because it, it just it needed it. So I am relatively new to paint pouring. I am still experimenting and learning myself. So uh, hence the, uh, the paint that was slightly too thick for this particular painting, but it ended up pretty cool anyway. You'll have to let me know what, uh, what you think when you see the end result. But I've got that um, ultramarine blue. The first color was the um, pearl arctic blue, and now I'm putting down the sage, the pearl sage, <clears throat> and finally the silver. I've got that inspiration picture in mind where it was kind of not really stripey, but well, you saw the picture, you know how it was. And so that's, that's kind of what I'm trying to go for. Realizing that when I start moving the paint around, it's not going to necessarily give that exact look. Um, had it been a little bit more fluid, it might have gotten me a little closer, but ultimately I should have known that I wasn't going to get the look I was inspired by, um, so to speak, by doing it this way. But uh, I'm gonna add in some more white here in just a moment. I was running out of my um, Amsterdam white there though. So I squeezed every little last bit that I could get out of it and uh, here we go with the shifting. Now, 
you can see there are some little spots that are moving. Most of this is not budging anywhere. I was like, oh no, <laughs> it's not going anywhere. Um, so I was like, well, maybe I need to add some more paint. I mean, I've got it almost vertical, y'all. And it, you can see there are a few places where it was cooperating, but those little spots were few and far between. And it was very clear to me right now that this picture was going to look very, very different from the inspiration picture. So never one to back down from a challenge. I continued to uh, see if I could get the paint to move and to flow and do something. And then eventually I am going to set this back down and add some more paint because I thought, well, maybe it's just not enough paint. Maybe it's less that it's the consistency. No, it was definitely the, the consistency to, to some degree. But I thought, well, maybe if I add more paint, it will help. So I've got my Amsterdam white that I am trying to squeeze more out of. You can see I'm kind of getting little drips and areas there because I'm basically blowing bubbles with it at this point so i got what i could out of there and then i decided you know what if i can't add more white i'm going to add more of my colors and so i went back and added some additional stripes going in the same direction that i had before i was pretty committed to uh to that design so to speak um or to that technique that i'd started with so added in some more paint and then I will attempt to um, tilt it again. I did finally um, succeed in getting it to do something, but it definitely wasn't what you would normally expect with paint pouring. So highly recommend you make sure that your paints are fluid enough um, and it'll work for you much better than what you're seeing me struggle with here. And keeping in mind, this is also sped up two and a half times, right? So like I said, this paint's just not going anywhere fast. But I'm trying to just make sure that at the very least I have everything covered on the canvas. I want there to be design and it actually did turn out pretty cool. This is a much bolder design than what I had had in mind. That inspiration shot was very soft and flowy. It made me think of the ocean. And um, I, I think part of what I was drawn to with this picture, I was getting ready to leave for a trip to Cancun. I happen to be sitting in my hotel room doing this voiceover. I'm going to be heading home the day after this uh, this video goes live for you guys to watch. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, so just having the, the beach and warm weather in mind, that was part of, of my inspiration with this piece. So I'll definitely be sharing some uh, pictures and things from my Can Cancun trip with you all when I get back. It's been an amazing, amazing time. Definitely much warmer than back home in New Jersey where there was snow on the ground when I left for vacation. So it's been a nice change. But you can see this is pretty much um, where I landed. I'm just making sure that all of the edges are covered and it's still pretty cool, right? But just very different than what I had had in mind. And I am excited to share the second paint pour project with you that I think turned out even cooler and a little bit more in line with inspiration, if you can believe it, even though I do something very different.
DIY number four. Okay, so this is silicone oil. I'm going to add one drop of that to my ultramarine blue, just a single drop, um, and that's going to help create cells. Now, as I mentioned before, I did add some more Floetrol to these paint colors. So it's going to make them a little bit more runny, which is what we need and want. Um, it also extended the paint a little bit more because um, I needed more paint for this project. So that first canvas was a 12 by 12. And this one is, I think it is an 8 by 10. And both of them came out of a pack that I had gotten from Michael's. It was like a pack of 20 canvases or something like that. Um, and they were, I think they came out to like $1.25 a piece or $1.50 a piece. So really, really good quality and great deal. Um, using my palette knife to just make sure I've got it all covered with my Amsterdam white again. And we'll get this ready to go. So this time I am literally just going to messy pour them into the middle of my uh, canvas. I wasn't sure what this was going to do. Um, I don't know if this is like a cardinal sin with regard to paint pouring techniques, but <laughs> I was just trying an experiment to see what would happen. Um, I also realized as I was putting all these colors down that I'd forgotten to add white in the mix um, because generally you do want to layer with, with white as you're going. Um, and I completely forgot about that until a little further in. So eventually I realized and I added it in and it worked out just fine. But I'm going to do my best to use up all of this paint because I don't like to waste it. So I am, uh, I was a little more conservative with how much I mixed this time. And um, I'm going to be able to use all of it up on these two canvases. So just continuing to layer. I think it might be right about here that I remember the white. Yep, there we go. So I've got some white in there. I'm like, oh yeah, that would work. That would help. But just layering on those same four colors. So the, and now I'm just gonna use my, again, I don't know if I if this is like a, a no-no. <laughs> I'm just scraping the paint out of the container. Um, but this is the silver and then again I have my um, pearl sage green I've got my pearl arctic blue which is what I'm putting down right now the sage green is still up there top right of the screen and then the ultramarine blue these are all Arteza paints but you can use whatever acrylic paint you have or like to use um, and these are, again, mixed with Floetrol, but you can also mix them with water and thin them out with water. You just want to make sure that you're not um, diluting them too much. You want to make sure that you uh, don't overdo it. So scraping out this last paint, and then we are going to be ready to start tilting. I guess I've got one more color to go here. And then... I ended up putting white on top at, at the end and between the sage right here and the white, um, it ended up having a rather large white area or very light area in the middle of the thing that I wasn't a fan of. So I did end up working a little bit harder to get that off of the, the one edge. You can see it kind of forming now in the center, but um, I'm just going to keep working with it. And this is the way that it should be actually working. So the paint you can see is actually moving much better than it did in the first um, design. And you can see some of those cells forming from having the silicone oil in the ultramarine blue. And sorry, it's tilted a little bit more than what you can see, um, but I'm just trying to get that white and uh, sage off that bottom right corner. It was just a little too much for um, my taste. So getting that off and look at how fun and cool this is. And in my opinion, this is much more in line with that inspiration picture and done completely differently, right? I think this is such a cool piece. I'm in love with this and I hope that you like it too. 
I'm excited to show you the the dried um, finishing piece but first I'm going to go through with my torch again pop the bubbles you see all the cells that the silicone helped to create I think this is such a neat piece but let me know what you think of the the finished product here And now it's time for a shout out timeout. Cool, Kathy, what adorable spring projects. I love it. Thank you for sharing. And awesome, Valerie. Valerie got busy with a lot of resin. I love these. I would love to give you a shout out as well. If you have interest, just send me an email at craftedbycory at gmail.com. DIY number five. All right, so this is kind of a trash to treasure project. I have had this in my stash for quite some time. Um, there were flowers that came in it, um, I think like a couple of years ago, but um, I just thought the package was so pretty. I didn't want to get rid of it and I didn't really know what else to do with it. So I put it in my craft stash and I've been trying to figure out um, how I might incorporate it into a project. So. I'm just cutting along the seam. This is um, basically a heavy plastic and uh, it's got that pretty um, rose gold foil on it with that design. So I've also got a piece of parchment paper and my Dollar Tree picture frame that I had painted white a while ago. I must have used it for a different project. And I'm just going to um, get this out and use that insert to um, identify the size that I need. I'll go ahead and just trace that and then get that cut out. And that's going to serve as my background for my picture. I thought it might look like a pretty blue sky. So going to go ahead and trace that off once I figure out where I want the image to sit on that background. So I'm just using a Sharpie and then I'll go ahead and cut that out as well. And once I have that all set and ready to go, I did, um, I was trying to decide if it needed something more, but as I was thinking about it, I figured, you know what, let me put it in the, the frame, see how it looks. I mean, how easy was that, right? Um, I did feel like it needed a little bit something extra, but I wanted to see how it was looking first. So very simple, very plain. It's fine by itself, but I went ahead and pulled these rub-on transfers out of my stash and I wanted to add some flowers um, to the design. So figure, you know, the bird is there, so this is the hummingbird, and perhaps um, there are flowers in the mix of whatever, I guess that's a flower. I, I'm not really sure what the design is exactly but um we're gonna call it a flowering bush and <laughs> i'm gonna add some roses and other flowers to it i was trying to decide if they should go behind the plastic onto the paper or if they should just go directly onto the plastic and trying to think of the placement and whatever else so i did start trying to put it on the paper but i was like okay how am i gonna figure out where they need to be but then the um the foiling was honestly oh yeah and I it started to stick you got to be careful with these because they will stick and you can damage them you want to make sure you do not press them down at all until you are sure they're where you want them um but I felt like the the foil was going to cover up a lot of the um a lot of the design with the flowers and they weren't quite looking the way that I, I had envisioned them looking 
with them on the paper. So I did end up trying to see what it would look like if I put them on top of the plastic. I liked that better. So ultimately that was the direction in which I went. So I just got them all lined up and taken care of. And I'm not sure why I felt the need to line it back up on the blue background because it wasn't going to make any difference at all <laughs> for the uh, the robot transfers, it, you know, but anyway, but then I just used my burnishing tool to rub those on. You can certainly use a coin or a credit card or a library card or just something that's got um, a good edge on it that you could, I used to use pencils, you know, and just scribble all over it you know when I was a kid I used to use these all the time so but that was it and then I could pop it right back into the frame and it made a cute little spring picture but let me know what you think of this one Okay, everybody, that's it for today. If you enjoyed the projects, remember to give me a big thumbs up, leave me a comment, let me know which one was your favorite. And until the next time, be well, be kind, and make it a great day. Thanks so much for watching. Take good care. Bye.